single catch pork chops. And so when we speak of affirmative repositioning, understand, it's a revolutionary collective dream. It's not only jobs, I'm banda, but I get it. This system is cancerous, designed to chronically kill leaders like what happened to Abel and Steve Jobs. And so when I see black beauty, they might see a farm worker, a yard cleaner, or a security guard like we're entitled to these jobs. Yet my charcoal complexion carries enough heat with solar panel tendencies to generate power. So while they rub in islands, we freedom fight like Mandela kiss the ground when we land, and that's how we consecrate ours. You tell me this. Courage and commitment to talk about a controversial subject, the subject of leadership. The Honorable Minister said, and I agree with him, that there is not a single subject that has received scrutiny like the subject of leadership because many things begin and end with leadership. Writing in 1983, a great African writer from Nigeria, Chinua Achebe, said with regard to his country, that the problem with Nigeria, and one can dare say the problem with Africa, is simply and squarely the problem of leadership. Perhaps there is merit in what he said, but there is also the danger that when we talk about leadership, we invariably think that leadership is about politics. And when we talk about leaders, we are inclined to believe that leaders are those in the political arena. But leadership is larger than that. It is lost, no, not lost on me that our good friends Agostinus has chosen to discuss the controversial subject of leadership from a biblical perspective. And one does not need to be a believer in the Bible one does not need to be a Christian to acknowledge that when we talk about leadership, there are many lessons that can be drawn from the Bible. Whether one is talking about leadership in the household, whether one is talking about leadership in the political arena, there are many things that we can glean from the Bible, and that is why I think that you chose to locate your analysis of the subject of leadership from a biblical. You must recognize that a position of leadership is a position of honor and privilege, and it is servanthood. And one can very quickly go to the New Testament and you find the two sons of Zebedee who said, oh Lord, make us be with you, one to be on your right side and one to be on your left. And Jesus said, as to who shall sit on my left and my right, it is not me to choose, but it is my Father in heaven. And he who will be great amongst you must be your servant. So whenever you are thinking about leadership, you must remember that leadership is about servanthood. The problem that we have in Africa, particularly in the political arena, is that whenever you choose any individual into a position of leadership, then they begin to imagine that they are demigods. Yeah. Then they begin to imagine that they have the monopoly of knowledge and wisdom. Yeah. Even if you knew them, even if you knew in your five village that they were not particularly intelligent, the day that they are elected, they now assume that some miracle may have happened in the ballot box. But let us not confuse leadership with political leadership. Yeah. You've got to ask yourself, whatever it is that you are doing, if you are a teacher, what kind of a teacher are you? If you are a messenger, what kind of a messenger are you? If you are a driver, what kind of a driver are you? If you are called upon to undertake any exercise, what kind of a person are you? Today we have come here and we are taking for granted the equipment that we are using to amplify our voices. There's somebody who did not sleep that when we speak we may be heard. There is somebody who did not sleep that we may have this hall organized. There is somebody who did not sleep 
that when we arrive from our various countries, we may arrive in comfort. And these are the unsung heroes. These are the men and women who do the good things that a few of us may claim glory without being glorious at all. And I think, therefore, that when we are talking about leadership, we must remind ourselves every so often that one of the greatest things about leadership is that we must have clarity on mind. You are the one who met me, made me go to the Bible. Let me go to the but, Bible. And I think that that is what leadership is all about. A leader must not be shaken from those fundamentals. If you find a leader who behaves like the flag behaves when the wind blows, that is not a leader. That is a footloose individual who is a danger not only to himself, but to the people that he or she purports to lead. The Bible is rich in this. But the Bible does not stop there. That is why you chose the Bible. The Bible tells us that we must be people who are, must be prepared to sacrifice. We must be prepared to die for what we believe in. How many people in positions of leaders are in positions of leadership are prepared to die for anything? And it is instructive that a leader need not necessarily hold any position in Africa. We confuse positions for leadership. And the Honorable Minister, you are ever so right when you say that you can occupy a position but you are not a leader. And when you want to see an individual who is not a leader, I do not know the Honorable Minister very well, but I suspect from the introduction that you are a leader. And my suspicion is confirmed by the fact that the political leaders in your country, for some reason, which I do not know you know, and the Namibians know, your first president saw some merit in giving you a position. You must have served well. And your next president also saw some wisdom in selecting. You must have served well. And your current president also saw some wisdom in giving you the opportunity to serve. You must have served well. In other words, three individuals from different cultures and upbringing saw something in you. That thing must be leadership. That thing, I do not know what it is, but it must be leadership. And I was quite impressed. In your typical African country, if you are a cabinet minister, as you are standing or sitting where you are, there would be three individuals standing behind you. <laughs> Who are your bodyguards? I do not know whether they are in the crowd. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that leadership, true leadership, also demands humility. This is the, le the message that I'm trying to pass on, that when you are a leader, you've got to be humble. Is it not in the New Testament, because you asked me to talk about the Bible, that Christ says that when you are invited to a party, please sit at the back so that it is us who may call you. Because if you sit in the front seats, we may come and whisper to you and say, these seats are for guests. <laughs> and we now take you back. And the tragedy is that when you are treated in that way, you lose the respect that you have. So humility is at the very heart of true leadership. The other thing that we must learn about leadership is succession plan. Do you have a succession plan? And we learned that you are talking about leadership from a biblical perspective. This Bible is rich because it talks about everything, about leadership. And Christ is the one who knows that he's going to be taken upstairs by his father. And what does he do? He has a succession plan. And what is his succession plan? Is that he goes around Galilee and picks a fisherman, a tax collector, and all of the 12 of them, these are the people who are attending the Jesus school. And during his short life, when they are attending the Jesus school, he's always educating them through proverbs and other things and telling them and warning them. And when Jesus is taken upstairs, 
they continue with the Jesus ministry and 2,000 years later, that ministry is alive and well because there was a succession plan. So when you hear somebody say, I cannot leave office because I do not see anybody that I can leave power to, that individual is not a leader. He is a danger to the society because the truth is, you are successful when your successor succeeds. And I you know in Africa, particularly in the political arena, there are individuals you see, they say, how can I leave? How can I leave? Who will take over from me? Let them go to the Bible and look at the Jesus succession plan. But other people have taught us that some people fit to be made in the image of God and some of them were produced when God was tired. Right, I wanted to take too long to speak. But if leadership does not include what I will mention here, there are only four things that are, invo in, 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 uh, that are involved in leadership. First of all, leadership should be patriotic, such that a leader need to find that best thing they need to offer to the people, organization, or the country. This means we need to be loyal to the vision and people. Secondly, it must be forward-looking or future-oriented. Third, leadership must be a trusteeship. And lastly, it should be a motivation. The tragedy, however, is we are having wrong competition of things. Those of us who have discovered the wealth do not want others to access it. <laughs> and it's shame to us when we invest so much money that we hide from the whole population and hide it in a foreign land. And when we die, that money is stuck in there. Yet, there are people who are bullying us you have seen on social media where presidents are making fun of Africans and we are being called names. Why should we allow these things? Don't we respect ourselves enough to have done these things? What kind of hearts do we have? I don't care if I'm shot dead. Martin Luther King died. Today we are talking about him. And some people who never stood up, we don't know them. If I die today, at least you know, I have planted seeds. <laughs> we are having wrong competition of things and wrong desires for leadership benefits. And these things have disabled so many institutions around the world, and much worse in Africa. How many GTRs did you buy this year? <laughs> did you take someone to Dubai? Those are the only things that we talk about. And then we're having false prophets who are saying that you should just pray, and then God sends you money in the bank account. And yet they are asking people to offer money which does not benefit the church. <laughs> Even as the youth who are saying the old people should go, our intention is they should go so that we get a chance to get money and buy cars. So if, if this is our desire, then why should we fight? Because we are all in one, one WhatsApp group. <laughs>